Hi, I'm Mike Curley from Active Race Engines. I have a customer with me today, uh, Wally. Uh, Wally, you're building a Cobra kit car? Yes, I am, Mike. Thank you for having me in the show. I yeah. just wanted to come in and uh, talk about cars and see what it takes to put one of these together. Okay, well, uh, uh, the difference between building a stock engine and building something like what Wally's looking for, uh, we use a term called blueprinting. Blueprinting means putting everything on spec, and that's everything, the compression ratio, your rod housings, your pin housings, your pin clearance, every aspect of the motor is checked. It takes longer to build a blueprint quality engine, but usually the end result is, is much better than an engine that's just been production built. Okay, so what you're saying is, is if you just take all of these parts together, even though their specifications say one thing, and just bolt them together out of the box, you're going to be in trouble in a few... Well, not, in, in not necessarily be in trouble, but you your chances of having trouble are, are quite large. You really need to go to a shop like ours that's got the proper equipment for checking things, things like compression ratio. You can look in your in, online or go to a catalog and they may say that with this piston and head combination you're making 10 to 1. But really that doesn't mean you're going to make 10 to 1. For instance, you may get a, these are AFR cylinder heads and they may say that these heads are, for instance, uh, 58 cc's. But you'll check them, and you do that by pouring it and measuring the volume of the combustion chamber. You may find that they're actually 62 cc's or 56 cc's. Never take for granted that just because the manufacturer who made the part says it's this size or this much clearance, don't take for granted that it is. You need to measure it, you need to make sure. So most of the stuff we're gonna cover off today is gonna be concerning blueprinting and the various different checks we do on the motor while it's going through the process. So Mike, if we're going to start a project like this, where do we need to begin? What do we need to understand as to what my needs are or what the owner's needs are to build one of these engines? Well, the first thing we do, Wally, is I, I sit down with the customer and I, I, I spend a lot of time talking to him to see very, what he's going to use the car for. Is he going to drive it on the street? Is it at the racetrack? If it's at a racetrack, what kind of racing? Are there any rules involved? Uh, you need to cover off what kind of fuel is the customer going to run because that's going to dictate what compression ratio you're going to run. Right. Uh, uh, you need to talk to the customer about how much horsepower he's trying to make. And then at the end, once you've got a rough idea of what he's trying to do, you need to talk to the customer about budget because as we all know, some of these can get fairly expensive and there's no point me designing a motor that's going to cost $10,000 when, when the customer only wants to spend $5,000. So once we've agreed then on what we want to build and what type of horsepower I'm trying to achieve and how I'm going to actually use this vehicle, what are the next steps? Like what are the next stages I go through then in the selection of what we're going to build and how we're going to build it? Well, uh, at the end of the day, I'm going to prepare a quotation for you so you know how much money we're into. Once we get past that, then we're going to order the parts. We're going to wait for the parts to get here. At that point, the, the actual engine machine work begins and a lot of the machine work that we perform here at Active Engines are blueprinting operations. Uh, uh, the boring, the honing, again, you're, you have a manufacturer's clearance on the piston that you have to achieve, and you have to have the right equipment, precise equipment, that you can check all these running clearances. Other things that have to be scrutinized, every housing, every single machine part in the engine has to be scrutinized. Don't think, Wally, just because it's a brand new part that it's on spec, I can pretty much guarantee you that it won't be. A lot of people are just putting these motors together, buying the raw parts from the various different manufacturers and putting them together and then having problems afterwards or finding out that it doesn't uh, perform the way they had hoped it would. Whereas if you come to a, a, a shop like ours, we're going to go through every housing in the motor. As far as compression ratio, for instance, we're going to measure how high that piston comes in the bore. We're going to calculate the volume above the piston. We're actually going to measure the volume of your combustion chamber, never mind what the manufacturer said it was. We're going to know the volume of your head gasket. This means I'm going to know the total volume above the piston at top dead center. We'll calculate, never mind what the book said it was, what is the compression ratio, and then we'll machine the engine to achieve the numbers you're looking at. That's one example. The valve spring pressures. This is something that a lot of engine shops miss. It's absolutely critical that the valve springs that are being used on the engine c will work properly with the camshaft that you've chosen. Now the camshaft, when you buy a brand new camshaft from a quality company like Comp Cams or Crowler or whoever, 
they always come with a cam spec cart. And in that cam spec cart, they're going to give you an open and close spring pressure. You have to hit those numbers. You have to make sure that when the valve's closed, it has the proper pressure. When the valve's wide open, it hits the proper pressure. If you don't, you're either going to have early valve float, or you, if it's too much spring pressure, you take the risk of taking the low braid off the camshaft. So you have to have a, pro, a, a, a decent spring testing machine. Uh, here at Active Engines, we actually document every cylinder head we do. Uh, it's the same with the balancing. When you change all these various parts in this particular build, we're using an H-beam rod, we're using a 4340 crank, we're using custom mall pistons. This engine has to be balanced, okay? So you're gonna, you're gonna first off make sure all the rods weigh exactly the same, both the big end and the small end. You're gonna make sure all the pistons weigh the same. Once you've done that, you're gonna work this through a formula, which again, we, we, we record in a book for the balancing. And uh, uh, at that point, we, we, we can't spin the pistons and rods on the crank wally. So what right. we actually do is we have what's called a bob weight, and we make them weigh exactly the same as your reciprocating mass. We then spin it on a special machine that has sensors front and back, and it'll tell us how far out of balance in a location where to either add or remove weight. And basically, you either add or remove weight at the front or the back of the crankshaft, and we balance them down to within a tolerance of one gram. Okay, and then that covers off the balancing. Um, if you're running a race engine and you want it to, to seal as good as it can, what we do when we're boring the block is we'll actually take the bores to within five thou of our finished size. We then affix a heavy plate on top of the decks of the block and torque them the same as they're going to be torqued when the engine's built. This is called a stress plate or a torque plate. Okay, if you do this, what you'll find is when you torque the head bolts, it actually pulls the top of the bore out around. So what we do, as I said to Wally, is we leave 5,000 material removal, put the plate on, torque it, then finish holding the bores. And what that means is when you go to build your motor, the top of your bore, where it's the most important, will be exactly round. 